You see it stuff? Oh, it did not notify me, so I'm gonna refresh the page. Did you see the light? Oh, I see it. Yay! Now I have to wait for it to close. All right. <laughs> One step at a time. Um, no, no, no. That's RCPO's public library. Oh, now I was the notified agent. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, this is Wi-Fi here. Be. No, the hey, Aaron's here. Hey, we got people. What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of Ghost Vader Huh? Okay. Let you eat your what? This guy's terrible. Oh, oh. Well. We are currently waiting on Michael to do another post. First of all, you can continue with your little BS little snap thing. I did it already. All right, then continue with your little What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of Ghost Vader Ignorance. We are so happy to be back. We are. After a little layoff due to uh, me having surgery. Will has facial reconstruction surgery. Look at him. He's like only 20% ugly now. Only 20%. It's That dead lips don't help you at all. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. We can we can cancel this whole situation <laughs> and start again next week. <laughs> no, nah, man. We appreciate everybody for joining us, um, even though we had the long layoff. Um, so shout out to everybody who's dedicated, who are part of the... Oh, Ben said, oh. nah, still ugly. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got to get you back on the show, man. Um, Just so we can clown your ass. But yeah, man, this week we got a dope show lined up. Yes, we do. Uh, a lot of things recently happened in the news, uh, media. Um, Amber Geiger, the Amber Geiger and Botham Jean case, uh, that came to a close. Sentencing was done. She got, what, 10 years? 10 years. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about that. We're also going to be talking about uh, the Joker movie. Yes. yes, I think it's gonna be the that. last superhero movie of the year. Well, not superhero. Superhero. It's definitely not superhero. Oh, you know your morals lie, bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> you know where you at? After that movie, I'm, I might, I might be done flip. You think so? Think but uh, we're gonna be talking about that, particularly which Joker throughout the years we've enjoyed the best. Jared Leto. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Stop. <laughs> um, we're also gonna be talking about uh, one of our, I guess. Favorite slash not favorite people on the show. <laughs> this is my favorite. It's Will's issue. Yeah, I got a problem with it sometimes. <laughs> uh, Amanda Seals. Uh, was it Emmys recently? Was it Emmys a few days ago? Yeah, a well, ago? like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. She had a uh, she had a altercation. A situation. Um, yeah, a situation <laughs> at uh, one of the uh, after parties mm -hmm. uh, at the Emmys. So uh, we're gonna be talking about that too. <clears throat> but uh, unfortunately. We got to uh, run down these church announcements. You're going to stop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Take that oh. You ain't shout out our lovely moderator for the day, man. This week, <laughs> we got a lovely moderator. Yeah. Star Mana Fuck You Allen. What? Fuck You Allen. <laughs> No, nah, man, Star, who's uh, been a guest on the show before, she decided to help us out, yeah. help moderate the comments. Uh, she's going to kick out anybody who's being over the top. Exactly. Or she's either going to let us know about it. Anybody who, anybody who insults me personally, she will immediately block you. And anybody who insults me, she'll... Anybody, anybody who hates on me, she's going to pin the post. <laughs> exactly. Now, thank you so much, Star, for helping us out. We love and appreciate you. At least one of us do, anyway, here. Um, for these church announcements <laughs> for this week, uh, for Saturday, October 12th at 8 p.m., it is the Helm in the Game Pajama Jam. Did you hear about this? I did not. That's lit. Until I read the paper. Okay, well, I'm glad you finally read the paper for once. Um, Tanisha, Queen of Shall Be. <laughs> Y'all yeah, know she was on our guest in the, in the past. She created her own board game based off of the um, Different World TV show. Very, very dope individual. She's having a whole pajama jam where you can play stage. You play him in the game. Um, it's gonna be contest. Uh, yeah, bro. We, yeah, yeah. We, we can go there and beat everybody else. Hey, I, can we make can't, it. I, I mean, know. I gotta look. I gotta see if I can make it. But if we can, you ain't got nothing going on in your life. <laughs> All right, show's canceled. Um, like I said, spades that we always win. And if you come there and get your ass beat by us, don't be mad. Um, <laughs> apparently, some refreshments stars enjoying it are quite lit. 
It's gonna be showing nostalgic '90s music videos. That's that's gonna be dope. Don't worry. Um, yeah, like I said, contest. Uno, bro. Uno about to go down. They gonna have to explain the rules. They gonna have to. We gonna have a thorough <laughs> explanation of the rules beforehand. And of course, him in the game. Food will be available courtesy of Fish Bando 803, the hottest fish spot in Colombia right now. And um, taps, of course, will have beer and wine available for purchase. Uh, tickets are fifteen dollars in advance. And $20 if you get them at the door, so I suggest you get them ahead of time. Like I said, it's going to be super lit. Tanisha is super awesome. Um, like I said, they, and this is one of the last shows that's going to be up taps before they shut it down. So we got to. They shutting taps down? Well, they, they're moving. They got to find a new location, man. What? Yes, I'm very, very sad. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so we got to blow it up. The underground arcade home. Yes. Listen, that's, that's what we're doing. Next up, you already know. What I'm about to, what you say? Yeah, Boyfriend. Boyfriend. Exactly. Next up, y'all know I got a shout out Blue Note Poetry, which is coming back once again Woo! next Tuesday. Yes. Yes. Look at this pause. Well, you can you can add more than two snaps. That's even better than the snap right there. That's that's the best. That's wonderful. No, we don't want that. Um, October 15th at 7 30 p.m. Blue Note is back at the White Mule. This time we're featuring um, Breeze the Poet. Who just won the um, like the international like the individual world poetry slam, where people from all over the world come to slam. He just won that thing um, alongside Calvin Mack, who's a very very dope rapper. We start featuring rappers now, bro. We we, we incorporate yeah. hip hop and blues. Into the, into the, into the, don't the, forget you erotica. Don't stop. I'm sorry, don't forget erotica. I, I need to. Yes, come with your erotic poems, please, because um, yes, we love those. Uh, Star is very well known for that. Um, she will tear it up again with her follow up poem. I'm sure. It's gonna be lit. It's a short story, honey. Short story. I'm sorry, we need to write. Um, short story. But yeah, man, come out um, next Tuesday, 7:30 p.m. at the White Mule. It's only five dollars, and I promise you, I promise you, you gonna have a blast. We always do. It's always amazing, right, Will? For sure. Every time. I need you to be more convincing next time. For sure. Every time. Thank you. Uh, so then. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, master. Uh, Sunday. Can you just look at the comments. Uh, Shut the hell up. No comments. Nobody said anything. I, I'm looking at some shit. Ooh, can I get through the trash can? Thank you, everybody. <laughs> In the room. Sunday, October 20th at 8 p.m. It is the Poetry Jam, hosted by Spirit the Tattoo Poet. <laughs> this, this whole live audience thing will work out. The acoustics. <laughs> if it's too loud, we can tell it started to clap so hard. I'm, I'm sure. No, you're not. No, you're perfect. Uh -huh. <laughs> Halloween edition. <laughs> Bring the <this> shit. <laughs> Poetry Jam Halloween edition. They're encouraging people to come in Halloween costumes and get lit. Some poetry. My big bro, Bugsy Calhoun, is going to be featuring. It's going to be great. Tickets are only $10 if you wear a costume. Uh, if you don't wear a costume, it's like $50. No, I'm sorry. It's like $15 if you don't wear a costume. But um, Poetry Jam is always awesome. That's going to be October 20th at the weekend at 8 p.m. The Poetry Jam. Be there. Word. Yes. All right, man. So, uh, if anybody's heard anything about the, uh, the case going on in Dallas, Amber Geiger, cop of five years, shot and killed this dude in his own home named Botham Jean. Uh, he was on the couch. I think they said he was watching TV and eating ice cream. That's what. Very, very threatening, if you ask me. Right. <laughs> um, I guess the story was that she thought she was going in her own apartment yes. somehow. I'm just saying what the story is, okay? Mm -hmm. She thought she was going to her own apartment. Mm -hmm. She said the door was cracked a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she entered, she was frightened for her life. Started shooting. Killed him. Um, yeah. <laughs> you sound like you're holding that's in right now. That's the story. I'm mean, the synopsis out here. Um, so they put her on trial for murder. Uh, she ended up getting convicted of second degree murder, sentenced to 10 years. Um, I think I think I read a report that said one of the mem either the family or one of the members of the family only wanted her to do five. I think that was the brother who hugged her. The brother, he didn't want her to do no jail time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said he yeah. wanted to do no jail time. He didn't say that shit. I know he didn't say that shit. It was just, nobody would say that shit. I'm sorry. He's literally, he's literally yeah, on the it's, stand. Yeah, it's, stand it's a quote. It's a quote. Oh, I okay. Uh, okay, we're going to skip over that. Um, so, anyways, man, the, the case had a lot of controversy. Not just for the fact that uh, it was a black white thing, uh, it was a cop or a black man. It was it was a couple of levels to this thing. Yeah. So 
I guess there was a debate if it's really is it really racism or anything. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think that she actually made a mistake, walked into the wrong home, and shot, <laughs> killed a dude on accident? <laughs> or do you think she was punished right? Like, I mean, ten years is a little bit of time. I definitely don't think she was punished right. Um, I honestly, the, it just sounds too fishy to think that you can make that many mistakes to go to the wrong floor. Um, from what I've heard from everybody that lives, everybody that testified that knows that apartment complex, mm -hmm. it's very easy to tell what floor you're on. But even if you got mixed up, like you made it all the way to the door, they got the door and the, the apartment numbers on the door, right down there on the door. She even said that herself. They got the apartment number right down the door. Make a mistake, man. He got this right ass red floor mat in front of his door that she does not have. You can make a mistake. <laughs> See? Well, if all things, if all that, if all that lined up, if all that was a complete mistake, and she went and she thought somebody broke in her house or her apartment. The main thing is is pro proper protocol to call for a backup when you think there's a break in the project. Do you really think like she was thinking about pro protocol? Like, do you think all do you think that instinctively should have come to her? If you're a cop for five years, why would it not? I'm just saying, like maybe you, maybe you like it's like it's like a clock in clock out type thing. Like you, it cuts on and it cuts off in some form or fashion. I don't. As a cop, like if you train to protect your personal safety at all times. I don't see how that turns off. When you live every day thinking that you may be killed or hurt, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you instill with this training, if it was proper training, I don't see how that just turns off just because you're not in the, because I mean, even as a cop, you're not in the building all day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you out all day. So I don't think that turns off just because you're not being paid at the moment. I don't think that inherently just stops working. I mean, I don't know. I kind of think based off her personality and it could have been poor training as well. Mm -hmm. That maybe she did have kind of like a shoot first, ask questions later kind of deal. Because there was there was some Pinterest stuff that she had posted, mm -hmm. you know, that was pretty negative and uh, I guess derogatory towards people. You know, it wasn't necessarily racist, but it was like borderline. Did you hear about the actual like racist texts that she had? Did you hear about those? Well, yeah, it was. Well, it can be. Seen it was. Yeah, it could be seen as racist. Yeah. yeah. For those that don't know, like she had like it was like three key text messages. One was like she ended up working with a bunch of black cops one day. She's like they do things a different way or something like that. She said like not, not, I'm not racist or anything, but it's like damn, it's a lot of black cops in here. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like one. I feel like um, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Another one was um oh she was complaining about Martin Luther King Day like coming around again. She oh, said, oh, they said they were doing that. <laughs> It was just like dumb shit that like I'm sure like most white people do on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> that's why people are racist. Um, that's not a that's false not, statement. Yeah. So I don't think completely. It's not a it's not endorsed by cultural ignorance. It's it's not, it's not, but like um what was I gonna say? Um oh and so the one thing somebody offered her a German shepherd and they were like jokingly like, yeah, the only drawback is the dog's <laughs> racist. And she was like, Oh, I love German shepherds, blah 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 blah. And it's okay because I'm racist too. Yay. That's not what was said, was it? She did say like it's okay. I'm racist. I am too. Is what she said. That was not okay. All right. Is that what you read? Right. I, I read something different. It was still. It was still like the lady was like, something about the dog being racist or something like that. I didn't see the I am too part. She said like she looked at a whole spill of like, I love German shepherds, blah blah blah, and it's okay. I am too. That's what I read. Match made in heaven, baby. <laughs> Chewing up black um, people. But <laughs> but I mean, so you, but you, I mean, you think it was an honest mistake that she went into the. Um, with there being no, like, evidence saying that she knew him, knew him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I would have to say it was a mistake. All these signs, bro. But you don't went to the wrong floor. I know. I know. It's crazy. Different. It's crazy. The shit, this thing's apartment is hella messier than hers. Like, was it really? Crazy ass, bro. Like, 26. <laughs> So what? He was 26. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, yeah. My mother was he, joking. He was living. Terrell Conscious Douglas Williams says, fuck no. <laughs> as, as an answer to your question. Thank you, Terrell. But if, there is a, <laughs> if I can get your last time, mine is hella slow. It's like a five second or more delay. Uh, no. We can do five seconds. I'll say that. Because yeah. I don't do all also the cords over here. everybody's comments because I'm not friends with everybody. So that's one thing Ooh. I know. I can't see everybody's comments. I can't see everybody who logs in if we're not friends. Okay. Um, Do you want to make comments? I can't see everybody. Somebody will be saying something. I won't see it because I'm me. Move over here and turn the laptop around. Um, so 
Yeah, man. I mean, without evidence, like I would have to say that it's kind of accidental. Um, but I think the force she used was excessive because of her own racism and possibly poor police training. So you think it was an mistake? Honest mistake that she went into the apartment. I, I just I don't feel right saying it wasn't a mistake. Like. But you think when she got there... If there was no evidence of them ever having an interaction before, then I can't say, I can't say she was looking to kill him. To be honest with you, I'm not going to be surprised if that actually ends up coming out. I hope that comes out. I could be wrong. See, I could see Benjamin Anderson in my computer. I mean, it's okay. He is Benjamin Anderson. He's white. All right. He's ugly. He's, 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 he's white as fuck. And that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this all the way over so here. Pull up? Okay, yeah, know. because yeah, I don't know why she's trying to narrow because your instructions were not clear. Just like her police training was fucked up. And she I said turn. And she I said turn the laptop there. around. <laughs> I didn't say nothing about moving the other table with you. I said, you said turn the laptop here. around. Thank you. That is what I said. Kids. Okay. See, I didn't ask so these people. So you have to like it. keep tapping this down. Yeah, I know. Okay. Right. Russia's fucked up. I couldn't even write any comments. All right. So, um, yeah, man. Do you think she was punished accordingly? Like for what she got charged. She charged with second degree murder and it was a they considered it a crime of passion. Oh, but how do you get a murder charge and not get life? How does that work? Happens all the time. How is that like I don't understand I never understood that though. Like how do you like crime of passion is like you snap or something caused, you know, whatever. Even though you, it was you that went into the wrong place, and this innocent man lost his life. But if this changes to her specific case, like I don't understand how that gets less than life. It was a whole life was gone, fam, through your mistake, and you're not charged with manslaughter. You charged with but murder. But if you, but if you define it as a mistake, do you think she needs to lose, get life? But like if you it, said it was if a you mistake. Start to define it as a mistake, it wouldn't be murder. It would be manslaughter, wouldn't it? I think the way I, I assume, because I don't know, but I think the way it's the case was being, uh, I guess, analyzed or whatever, was that she murdered him because manslaughter is like you somewhat accidentally did it. Okay. But she intentionally killed him. Okay. She intentionally killed him. Because she feared for her life. After so she herself. Said, as, so she says, after she herself did not follow proper protocol of taking cover and calling for backup before even entering the house. But should we should we have make her follow police protocol even though she's off duty? Like, yes. she, you think she should still? You're a cop, and somebody lost their life. Did you not following? I understand that. I do understand that. <laughs> but at that point, like, she's a civilian. You know what I mean? Like. I don't know, bro. I don't think you turn into a civilian because that would mean like, no, nah, I don't think that that works. Like, like you can't be a cop and allowed to be go allowed to go home with a gun and, and equipment, all this good stuff, and like just the rules of being a cop just not apply when somebody's life gets lost. I don't understand how that's justifiable. I I think that's the only way you could bring her down to what the sentence is. You know what I mean? Like she was. I think they're saying that. At that point, she was a civilian. Like, she does. She wasn't necessarily. She was like almost like, not necessarily not a cop, but she was, I guess, disarmed, not in the mode, not in cop mode at the time. You know what I mean? Jamie Spire says, if he had shot her, she would not have been a civilian. If he had shot her, that's great. That's 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 point. That's 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 Sound like Taylor. Fuck you, Taylor. <laughs> Terrell Conscious Douglas Williams says so. Either way, other cops should have been called first. That's, I do agree with that. So that's all I'm saying because that didn't happen, and a man's life was lost. This Texas broke me back. <laughs> See, I ain't, I ain't with that bullshit, bro. So a, whole, a whole black man's life got lost due to your recklessness and your both your recklessness and your quote unquote mistake of going to the wrong floor. That's 
That's, and then you got all these signs, right? You got so many signs. Tell them to you, you're in the wrong place. I know, I, I do fully agree. With like you. it's like, like, there's, nothing, like there's nothing I'm not agreeing with you on, except for I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to get the white woman off now. What? <laughs> y'all know y'all know how the show goes by now. Will's the resident <laughs> white woman savior. Misogynist. Yeah, misogynist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, they tell y'all who's joining in and who's tuned in, they might appreciate that. Sure. So, just roll call. Are you gonna do it? No, you can. It'll be easy. Aaron C. Myers Senior. Yeah, we love you. Benjamin Anderson, who gave that amazing comment that Will is still ugly. Taryn Madison, she said, "Don't play him, Mike." But boo. he played himself, Taryn. Boo. Exactly. <laughs> Lloyd Powell joined. Ronnie Foster Jr. Kilo Sway. Lester Boykin. Will. Jordan Wiggins, Terrell Conscious Douglas Williams. I'm loving what he has to say. Stephanie Gibbs Winkler, Roxanne Aaron Parker. They got some long ass names. And Veronica Branch. Love y'all. We, 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 we appreciate all. Oh, Greg's in here. Oh, all y'all. Yeah. Greg, definitely comment. We, we really want to know what you think. I, I really yeah, you know. He's probably not going to comment. No, you know. Like, <laughs> you know. Greg, comment. Jamie spoke up, Greg. I was like, Jamie spoke up. You got you know, to speak up. G Greg. <laughs> Like I said, I just don't make. And like I said, we're gonna wait, but like I think more evidence is gonna come I'm, out. I'm sure it will. And he was he was probably hitting, and he did it wrong, <sighs> or they had some kind of relationship where she felt some kind of way. And then you go back to like they she deleted text um, from the you know the cop that she had she was having a relationship with. Mm -hmm. That happened right after the whole incident happened. She mm -hmm. deleted a bunch of those texts. I don't believe that they can't recover those. It doesn't make sense to me because like anything can be recoverable. She was a little tight. Um, <laughs> so that doesn't make sense. Um, I don't know if you heard about the young lady Bunny um, came forward. Um, she had a, she actually took a video of Amber after the incident, and like apparently a bunch of stuff was happening where she heard somebody. Oh, I'm sorry, Jonathan Brown said that we're gonna talk about Jonathan Brown. Said he heard like some kind of exchange before the shooting happened. Oh really? Yeah, it's like it's just I would not be surprised if more stuff come out like down the road. Wow. What do you think about the whole Jonathan Brown? Oh, is it Joshua Brown? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um It's really coincidental. <clears throat> my only thing is I think it's real coincidental, but like if they were trying to like, you know, tie blue ends, like why would they do it so so soon? Yeah, so sloppily. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It seems strange. Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. I don't really have much to say on that because it's that really sucks. So Michaela Jasmine joined in. She said, Coco! Yes, the Coco. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. We love you. Blackity, black, black, black. I love it. And love Jordan Michelle. Wiggins says, I didn't know she deleted text eyeballs. And of course, they can recover them. So that's what I was saying. She did. She definitely deleted text. Really, really Taryn says, Taryn says, that's what I'm saying. signs that she could tell it wasn't hers. If she was black and he was white, the maximum sentence would have been given. I would think so. I agree too, but. I'm just speaking up for the white woman. Her, her, <laughs> voice, her voice has been silent. Her voice has been silent so long. <laughs> They're not even protecting their own. <laughs> this guy's the worst, y'all. I'm sorry. No. Nah. <laughs> this is too much. So many in the wrong direction. So, uh, I don't know if you heard. Well, I know you've heard. <laughs> <laughs> the family. Yeah. Um, particularly her, his brother. Mm -hmm. Um you know, spoke out in the court, you know, said he forgave her, didn't want her to do any jail time. Right. Um, you know, wanted her to live her best life, gave her a hug and all that. Right, right. How you feeling, man? Because some people are, like, up in arms about, like, how the That's family's a grieving. There's a lot of people up in arms. How the family's grieving, how they're handling it. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? How you feeling about that? I would say that's the one part that kind of I've been disappointed with a lot of people with. Um I mean, I don't know about the brother in particular. It just seemed weird the way he was acting was a little strange. But the concept of forgiveness, like, you got to think about the fact that this family had, like, what's been like a year and a couple months now to process mm -hmm. the whole situation. I've always thought of forgiveness as being for yourself more so than the, you know, the forgiving party. Mm -hmm. To me, if I forgive somebody, it means, like, I'm letting go of all this, all this animosity, anger, bitterness, because you're going to go on to do whatever. Like, Amber going to go on to live, do jail time. And maybe get cut short. Maybe it very well could be cut in half. Maybe she could die in jail. That could happen too. Right. But like, regardless, he's like going off somewhere. <laughs> like you still got to live with whatever you decide to live with. Yeah. So I've always thought of forgiveness as 
I'm just going to let go of all that and just cleanse my soul and give it to God or whoever I believe in mm -hmm. and let that shit off of me so it's not going to kill me. It's really been disappointing how much people are killing this family for wanting to forgive this woman yeah. and, like, dragging them through the mud. And this whole thing of, like, black people are always expected to forgive, I haven't really seen that. I'm not saying it's not true. I haven't really seen that because I don't, I don't promote that narrative. People I hang around don't really promote that narrative. Like we always got to forgive white people before they do to us. Uh, I don't necessarily think white people are supposed to forgive in general. Jordan, yeah, Williams for you, for yourself, right? With no hugs, so I guess you know, no hugs. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like you can forgive however way you want to forgive, though. Like yeah, I mean the hug was a little much for me. But me if too. That's what you want to do. <laughs> the real <laughs> conscious Douglas Williams says he is a word that rhymes with two. Fuck that. I think, I mean, that's how you feel, fam. Like, you know, <laughs> that's how you feel. Get it how you live. But, like, and it's not for you. Like, it's not, I mean, you have to do the same thing. It's just, like, this is yeah. how this family chooses to do it. And how we can, can we criticize other people for dealing with trauma the way they can deal with trauma? Like, I don't. Yeah, man, like, I, I don't believe in, like, holding on to hate or whatever yeah. for anybody. Like, get it, forgive whoever you got to forgive and get it off your chest. You don't have to interact with that person. Right. Definitely. That's the whole concept of the show. Forgiving is not forgetting. Yeah. Just because you forgive don't mean they absolve of any wrongdoing. Yeah. We're not, not saying all. like she deserved to have her head patted down and hugged up or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're not saying none of that shit. She's still guilty as fuck to me. Yeah. But um, but I don't mean to forget everything. I mean, she guilty to me too. Uh, I can't tell me. Um, Uncle Kobe <laughs> joined in and Zay, no, I'm sorry, Jay Zachary Little. Oh, oh, we, oh we know why he did. Yeah. And he said, like the logo. On the TV in the back, he likes the logo. Oh, the TV Jay digging the logo. Yeah, Jay. This is listen. This Uncle is, this Kobe took... said, "What what up though? What's up, man? What up, bro? <laughs> um, what you think? Yeah, man. I mean, like I said, the hug was a little much for me, but I think for, I think like freeing yourself of like hating somebody that's or just carrying that shit with you forever. That's one of the best things you can do for yourself. That's what I'm saying. So like, why wouldn't you? That's why I don't think either. People don't know. That about forgiveness, or they just like they just got that bitterness in them, yeah, to where they just feel like, nah, I can't let this shit go. Yeah, and I think even some people who are saying this are even like, I, I feel like most people believe in forgiveness. I don't know, but I feel like most people believe in forgiveness. But since it's like a white on black thing, right? They feel like we should be more, you know, uh, not not like, doing we it. Be more angry. We yeah, should be, be more angry. And I was thinking about this, bro, like. Because of like how news is like catered to our sensitivities, right? Mm -hmm. As a black person, you gonna always get the news of like some type of police shooting or whatever black excellence is happening right now. Yeah. So by the time you get that news, you're already molded to feel a certain way yeah. as soon as you read that, right? So when you by the time you go out to the world, like you've already been told how to feel about this as it yeah. is. So now you're talking amongst friends, your friends already feel this way. So you like you that much more hesitant to go against the grain and be like. Well, actually, I think da, 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 da. like it's like there's not a lot of spaces where you can just have a broad range of opinions about something when it's already solidified that you should be angry because you're black. Yeah, and it's some bullshit that happens to black people. They just get cycled over and over that to you. Like, it's just, like, it's getting fed <laughs> to you constantly. We start <clears throat> talking about consumption like all the time. She talks back. So Jay Zachary Little said, "I'm being supportive, you guys." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he means. I love it. He's a shot to me. Yeah, Cree joined in. Cree hey, in the building. Yeah, appreciate your thoughts. Jay please. Zachary said, you can't confuse forgiveness of the person versus the injustice of the sentencing. Bars. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what that's what we're saying. And everybody has different comments your feelings. But that's all we're saying is like, if somebody's strong enough, because people are looking at forgiveness as a sign of weakness. That's, that's crazy to me. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. The fact that people are putting up this I'm family, the opposite. Myself. Yeah. The fact that people are comparing this family to like slaves just because they said I forgive you. <laughs> that's... I didn't know that. <laughs> she already drank it too. The moderator is lit already, y'all. Oh. <laughs> hey, started. You just look at them comments. <laughs> I ain't really too many comments. Everybody's just but the lit. ones that are coming in are really good. Yeah, thank y'all so much for your We got 10 people watching. And then also, I, I checked on my page. It was Marcus. Mm -hmm. He he reposted and said the great Michael Murray. Oh, my God. <laughs> he Marcus, said that you, Will. Uh, <laughs> nah, man, we're the know. same person, man. It's fine. We're just, we're just <laughs> <laughs> Except for the whole Amber guy. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, but the misogyny we agree on, right? No, 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 But, I mean, what you think is the end game, man? What, what, I mean, what do we do? Like, do we just wait for more information to come out? I mean, what else you going to Because people just saw I mean, I, like, what's the, what's the point in rushing to some kind of judgment or some kind of movement? Did we talk about this on the show before? Yeah, like, you can just wait. Yeah, it's okay to wait. Like it's not. <laughs> you can. Chill. It's not a big deal. Like, <laughs> it's a big deal, but you can chill till you get more information. Yeah, of course. You can relax, not relax, but you know what I'm saying. You can speculate, reserve any hard, cold opinions. But then again, in the world where everybody's trying to get that first hot take, that article blown up as soon as possible, I don't see that happening anytime soon. But as far as like regular people on Facebook, like y'all can, y'all can just wait for more information to come out, man. You don't have to be. Let me ask you this real quick. Do you believe this was a racial thing? Do you believe that the case was based, had anything to do with race, and it should be viewed as that, or no? I don't, I mean, the text messages are weird, but, like, other than that, I don't see any hard evidence right now that makes me believe, like, she would purposely just kill this man just because he was black, as of right now. I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. I believe that she used excessive force in the way she approached the situation due to the fact that he was black. Okay, I can agree with that. That's what, yeah, that's what I was saying. I thought you meant like her going to do it. No, I'm just saying like did race have any part to play in it? Oh, okay, yeah, I can agree with what you said. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. I agree with like if she saw probably in the white man, let alone like a white old lady in the apartment, like she's yeah. not about to go in there. <laughs> Most people in the I was talking to people of the opposite race and they were like, this case has nothing to do with race. <laughs> you know where it was, you, 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 you know where it was at. But uh, listen. It is I a couldn't, very I couldn't rock with it. They were and they were hard down about it too. That's what but see that's what you do when you just don't gotta live with that shit, man. Yeah. Like you just never experienced it, or you're the one doing it and you don't even realize you're doing it. It's easy to say that shit. Terrell says she took a life. I burned half this country over my family, period. Forgive sure over Helen's unmarked grave. That's why the family is catching heat. The fuck we hugging racist murderers for? Like I said, that's to free yourself of this shit. Like I'm not saying. I mean, I'm not saying. Like I mean, he's not saying that you have to do what they did at any by any means by any stretch. Let me go, Joy. Let me go. What's happening? Abby King. Oh, Abby. Abby. What's what up? What do you do, Abby? Oh, um, we're not saying you have to do what they did. I'm just saying if somebody's forgiving to get themselves better, yeah. for themselves to feel better, I will never hold that against anybody. Why do you have to do it publicly, though? That's just... I can't dictate how somebody else forgives. No, of course. It's just a question. That's what they chose to do. You think I'm gonna wait till I find out what prison you go to then call up there? No, you don't have to even have see the other person to forgive. You can just forgive within yourself and let the world true. believe that you stand against this murderer who knew that because he was black, people would take her side. You know what I'm saying? And that's I don't disagree. They could have easily did it in private too. I just I, I can't dictate how I can. One of the things uh kind of was different about this case was they had uh, uh, what was it? Eight black people and four white people, I think it was on the jury. On the jury. Really? Yeah, and four substitutes. Mm. Uh, t- in total, it was a uh, four men and twelve women. Really? So yeah, I was reading something on that. They said that that had a lot to do with the diversity among the jury was a uh, had a lot to do with her actually getting convicted. I'm sure. So yeah. it's good to see it that it was a diversity. Right. <laughs> I'm sure, man. I'm sure. Um, on to somewhat lighter notes. <laughs> Are there any more comments on that? Somewhat lighter notes. Um, no more comments on that. Let's see. Kayla Zach joined in. Excuse me. Oh, Kayla Zach. I wonder what she had to say. Kayla, hey, sis. We appreciate everybody who joined in. Now, Kayla's cool as shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so, if anybody follows Amanda Seals, <laughs> She is. Uh, we always always say her name. Cause I have mixed feelings about it. She is a, a character. Um, <laughs> y'all about to connect. Y'all about to finally be friends on the t- on the topic for once. Michael thoroughly enjoys yeah. her. I. She has points at times. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to tell the story, Mike? Because it's too much. For me uh, to... Yeah, just a real quick rundown. If y'all follow, if y'all watch Insecure, which if you're not, get your life together. Watch it now. Um, one of the best characters on the show. <laughs> one of the best characters. One of the best characters on the show is Tiffany. I like her bougie Play, see, so you saw her. Played by Amanda Seals. Um, Insecure is a super popular show by uh, Issa Rae. Very dope show. Anyway, 
Amanda Seals was at the Emmy party, a black Emmy party, that last year she was given issues trying to get into because the pressure, one of the people who organized the party, named uh, Vanessa Anderson, who was actually Issa Rae's publicist, um, did not want her there. Um, gave her, like, apparently she walked up to the door, and according to Amanda Seals, Vanessa was just like, I don't have time for this, Amanda. I don't have time. Apparently, Amanda didn't do anything to deserve this. No, yeah. She just, like, gave her attitude. No, let me know. This is Amanda's side of the story. This is all Amanda's side of the story, yes. Yeah. Please, that's a very good We've heard nothing out of the other party. Absolutely. So that happened last year. So she already knew she wasn't welcome at this party. So this year, she decided she was going to go again. Now, this is the Black Emmy party. This isn't like a formal party of the Emmys. This is a basically a black party that Vanessa Anderson throws just for all the black celebrities to get together and just celebrate with each other. Because, um, you know, black people aren't usually celebrating. They need their own shit. Basically. Yeah. All the time. Thank you, Star. Um, so she decides to just go back again. Um, she's with her homegirl, Kiki, who's not a you know celebrity at all. She's just a regular person. <laughs> Let me ask you the shit. I mean, I think that's what hurt Amanda feelings the worst is that Kiki ain't nobody, but she just got in the party with no problem. But um, she went to the party. Some white girl who turned out to be black told Amanda she wasn't welcome at the party. Oh, she's actually black. She she found out she's actually black. Oh, what? She makes it sit a whole lot funnier. Um, so that she's not welcome at the party. Uh, she's not on the list. Amanda said, "Well, I'm not on the list." She was like, "You just not on the list." Um, Amanda gets told a total of like about four or five times that she's not on this list to get inside this party. And, but other people keep trying to let her in. Other people like who don't organize the party, because apparently she went because Jesse Williams invited her. Jesse Williams got nothing to do with organizing this party. He just invited her to come out. But all these people see what's going on, and they come up, what's going on? She's like, they wanted me to party. Oh, girl, I'll go talk to somebody, and they try to let her in. <laughs> so a manager ends up going off the security, just like, fuck it, I'm going inside anyway. Goes to the bar, stands there. At this point, security gets called. There's about three, four big niggas around her. Telling her she needs to leave, and she's looking at the cast of the Insecure, like, why y'all not sticking up for me? Why y'all she didn't, say, she didn't say she looked at the cast of Insecure. Yes, she did. She did. Yeah, she said she saw her. She said she saw several castmates of Insecure and other people she fucks with regularly. Oh. Saw the whole thing going on and did nothing. And you can tell because Drogue came out later on and spoke on it. Okay. So she saw these people. Then another one came in and stepped up and um, you know, spoke on her behalf. She ended up getting escorted out. I watched this whole shit play out on Instagram. Like it was ugly. She was all emotional and upset, and she was like recording the body, the bodyguard, the security guards. Oh, so you saw the whole thing. Yeah. Go. That's it. Because it was like a whole, it was like a 10, 15 story timeline of events <laughs> um, on Instagram, and she was just really upset that nobody spoke up for her, and you know, jumped in to see what was going on and spoke on her behalf, and she was like real mad. So I was like. I feel like if you're not invited to this party, first of all, why are you going somewhere you're not welcome with a person that already clearly doesn't fuck with you? Why am I going to somewhere when somebody that, that organizes the thing doesn't want me there in the first place? Let alone the fact that I just disregarded security and just decided to go in anyway. So, like, what was supposed to happen, like, to get you out of this party? Like, were you, were you supposed, were supposed to be like, okay, well, shit, she walked in, I ain't know what we can do. Like, they don't want you there. That shit's fucked up, man. That shit. It sounds fucked up. <laughs> it sounds fucked up, but like, who could avoid this whole situation? Would you go inside of a place? If you knew Star was having a party of the, the lifetime, this is the most elaborate party in Colombia, but you knew Star did not fuck with you, she did not want you there. If you came there, there was gonna be some issues. Are you gonna go anywhere? So the difference in the context, <laughs> no, listen, the difference in the context is, it's professional, and not, which I do agree with Amanda Seals on. She said that this is a black Hollywood party after the Emmys, right? Yeah. So it was more uh, professional and social, even though the shit was super lit. You know what I mean? And the fact that her show had a whole table there uh -huh. and she wasn't invited or she mm -hmm. wasn't able to join, that's super fucked up. It is, but like this isn't like... It's not, I feel like it's more social than professional. Like, this isn't like a game changing, like, because you're already established. Like, you're already a man of sales. You're well, like she man. said, she has to make appearances and make connections and network and do this, that, and the third. You have to make appearances when you're called to make appearances. No one called you to make an appearance at this party. No, you, no, you have to make appearances to keep your name relevant. Tara said you would show up at the party, yes, to be an ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> Likely. And, and Zuri, Zuri Rashana joined in as well as hey, Bo, her tip, Kayla's dad. So yeah, nobody else is saying anything. I have. Amanda Seals trying to stay at the party for as long as she was. She caused herself more trouble than she needed to. The fact that she just said, fuck y'all. She even says in a podcast, she was like, girl, bye. And just walked past. <laughs> that shit was funny. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Like, the fact that you. But the fact that Amanda Seals didn't know why. I, I completely agree. She she needed to know why that girl wasn't fucking with her. I feel like she does know. You she know probably what, does know. If y'all been beefing this long. She probably does know. Okay. But her story. I'm her not going to I'm saying she don't fucking know. Or maybe can can a reason not be because I feel the same way about if somebody just doesn't want to be around you. The answer could be just could be just I just don't fuck with you. Could the answer be like? But she if just that's the like case, you. you you don't fuck with her that heavy that you got to ban her from some shit. Apparently so. Like no, it's some shit in the background. Either, I think either, so. Either Amanda Seals doesn't. She genuinely doesn't know. I agree with you completely. Or in the, within the context of the story, she's not telling. I agree with both of those. But if even if this even if the feeling is I just don't fuck with you to the point. That I don't want you at my function that I put together. Is that not a legitimate enough reason? I don't I don't believe so. Not not in not in this setting. So you should be able to just barge your way into my thing because you want to be there. If it's like black Hollywood, then no, why can't she follow it? What is black Hollywood? It's just a that's a that's a that's a whole it was put broad... on by the, it was put on by the group, not this woman. The woman might organize it, but it was put on by the you know the sponsor of the whole shit is uh the publicist firm. But apparently nobody had a big enough issue with it to like try to fight her on it and be like, nah, man, it needs to be able to be here. Like, or either they were in agreement with her, or, or just she was fully over the whole shit. Right. But it's not like you know, or either they, or that or they just didn't care enough to speak up for a man that just be like, yeah, we actually want her there. Apparently they just did not care about her being there either. So all if all these steps were taken, like this is this one party, this one thing. And I've struggled with this myself too. I'm not. I'm not trying to front. I've struggled with the concept of, like, this is something I need. This is something I want. This is something I deserve. Why am I not like, being allowed to do it just because this one person says I can't do it? But like, just some things that just ain't for you. I, I don't. I don't agree, man. Like, this is so backwards. I'm usually be the one defending Amanda right now. <laughs> it's, it's fucked up, man. It's a fucked up situation. But I'm saying, like, it could have been a lot less fucked up. Because you're arguing about security guards pushing up on you. And she was mad at the white dude. <laughs> <laughs> she was. She was mad about the white security guard pushing up on her. But, like, you're in a place where the I've been told as a security guard, because this is another thing she was talking about. She was I don't think she was really guard. mad at security guards. No, she was talking about security guards. Uncle Kobe says if her whole cast was there, it would have been an issue had she not shown up. It's a lose lose. I don't think so, because last year she had problems trying to get in last year. And then um, Terrell says, if everybody don't like you, the problem ain't everybody. It's you. Now, that could be a case with Amanda Seals. She might be a little too abrasive for Vanessa. Jay says, she could. She said, could I get her friends in the club? I said, can Wait, this is the song. <laughs> Wait, what is this? this Jay, don't be coming to bullshit now. Oh, okay, he says, she said, could I get her friends in the club? I said, I can fit you fit my bins in the club. If not, treat your friends like my bins. This is Park the old wash ass 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 down. Yay? Okay. Oh, okay. Is it bins friends? It's something like that. It's, <laughs> Lord, I don't even know that. I don't know. Old, you just, <laughs> first, he asked me about clubs in Columbia. Now, he, Jay, you, you wash, man. You old and wash. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, that's funny. I love you, Jay. I agree it's a fucked up situation, but, like, I just don't understand. You already knew before you got there. You already know this person would have issues. Fuck her. She's, that, that's the thing, man. Like, she didn't come there for that one person. She didn't, but I'm saying this person did not want you here enough that they made it a point that she said herself target you to not be able to come in. Why are you fighting so hard? But, like, I mean, she said she wanted to celebrate the blackness of the whole shit. Is this the only outlet you can use to celebrate black shit? I mean, not the only, but after the Emmy, like it's a black Emmy party. Like, I understand. I'm not saying is, I'm not saying she doesn't have a reason to be upset. I'm not invalidating her feelings at all. I'm just saying, like, stay the fuck home. <laughs> you could have set this one up. Like, it just didn't. Have, it did not have to be humiliating for you. That's a hard L to take. But like, you just forcing your way into an establishment where security has been told that you're not allowed in. I don't think that's a solution. What's the solution if you if you if she didn't do 
If this wasn't the solution, or if the, you're saying this was a solution, I don't know what you're saying. There is no solution. <laughs> What's the solution? Because you just take, could just take her ass home, right? That is the only solution. But at the same time, like, I think she still had the right to be there. Like, she had the right to be there. How does she have a right to be somewhere that's like, they did not, was not built for her to be, like, it was not built for her, Amanda Seals specifically, to be at? But you're a black actress. You're so that Hollywood. entitles you to get no, listen, you in Hollywood. I get that. Your castmates have a whole fucking table. I understand that. Your Issa Rae's publicist has probably got well off just because of that show, or because of Issa in general. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So like you had a part in helping Issa and that publicist get money. You know what I mean? So sure. like, why? Like, what is the? I don't know if that entitles you. And I'm not necessarily saying entitles you, but there is no reason you should be banned from this venue. There's clearly some reason, like I said, because it's like, it's an out for her. Jay said, Jay Zachary Little says, all she had to do was chill. And then Mike Cannon says, yo. <laughs> Xavier Parker joined in. Jelani Harris joined in. What's wrong with your computer? Okay. And then... And then my computer's so bad. No, but why won't Are you hitting the wrong thing? No, I'm hitting the comment. Oh. And then Jelani Harris, okay, Xavier Parker said, okay, I see y'all with the graphics. You know. You know, you know what I'm saying? And you know. Joey Tucker joined. But yeah, man, there is no, there is no great solution here. I think it's just fucked up how she got done. I agree. I think she was treated highly unfairly. Pending, <laughs> pending, there whatever happened between them. I agree with you. Pending whatever happened between them, we only have a man to side. I don't know too many people. But I don't think that lady Vanessa Adams is gonna speak out. Or she Vanessa. probably not because she probably Anderson, man, that shit. Um. <laughs> But like I, I said, think that bitch looks stupid. <laughs> it's a victory. Man. I'm reading all this shit on our same room and like having a tough life. But like I just don't, we know, you just don't know too many people. There's a lot of people who just don't fuck with you because they don't fuck with you. Like whoever you are, you can't come off too confident in yourself. Mm-hmm. Why are you get... towards me? No, just bro, <laughs> hey, no lie, no lie. Mike told me somebody didn't fuck me too. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, me? <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked. When someone just doesn't fuck with you for no reason, like you get taken aback. Like, <laughs> bro, you told me, uh, I don't know if you remember, she was like, old girl that's a cashier. <laughs> she, well, she, uh, what was gonna say? she uh, was religious. I'm gonna just say religious. Uh huh. Um, she was Muslim, I think. Gotcha, bro. Yeah, like, I gotcha. I know you're yo, talking. she fucking hates you. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> She really did. That I was, was like, cool. dang, I thought it was cool. Apparently not. That's um, <laughs> so that's an instance of like you was just out here living your life and somebody just didn't fuck with whatever you yeah. had going on. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's a whole nother thing when somebody goes out of their way to block you from certain avenues. Yeah. So I feel like that's what I'm saying. I feel like it's just gotta be more to that story. And that's my only qualm with what Amanda was doing is just like it just seemed so vague. It didn't seem like I didn't see any accountability. I didn't see any like, you know, we had so and so happen in the past, so we had so and so conversation. It was just like this woman just said this just doing these things to me because I'm me. And, and that's it. And I mean sometimes that's enough for some people. Sometimes that's it. I just don't what know. What did uh old boy say? Uh the tall nigga, what did Dro say? Oh, Dro okay. Uh, so that's how you think it's more stuff to the story. Hey boy, I, hey, I fuck with Dro heavy. He's my guy. <laughs> he's my guy, he's such a dirtbag. He <laughs> Yeah, he's a trip. Um he said uh, he just went on Twitter, he was like you can't be a disrespectful ass person and expect to be treated nicely. That's basically what he said. Um, I don't, that's not an exact quote, but that's basically what he said. That that is an exact because when I read it, he said disrespectful ass. I remember that part. Person. Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah, that's. that's he emphasized like, the ass. Yeah, he did. I think he, he emphasized personal against her. He did. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, and you know, Amanda can like just go off on people. Yeah. And. So that and the fact that nobody came up and was like, what's going on? What's going on? And I'm a firm believer, like I said, I, I love you because I, you were a firm believer too and just staying out of a situation if you don't know the whole story. Yeah. And just being like, ah, I don't, I don't want them to do that shit. But like, it's another thing where like, the whole cast is just sitting there like, <laughs> like. <laughs> so it's just, it just seems like there's a lot more to the story, man. Dang, boy. Oh, but the, the main question was, um, we know how you feel, but. <laughs> When you see your friend arguing with somebody, a stranger, and you know your friend is dead ass wrong, like <laughs> do you just do you just take their side just because they're your friend? <laughs> uh, 
the people in this room know I stay out of it. <laughs> you do. I stay out of it all the way. It don't matter whose side I'm on. Absolutely. I'm not gonna comment because that ain't my place. Right. Now, if I see you getting done wrong, yeah, of course. Then you know I'm gonna speak up. For sure. In your situation, you was wrong. <laughs> wrong <as far. laughs> Wait. Oh, she ain't done. Okay. She just got on. She just got on. I was wrong as fuck. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but um, so in regards to people who do just take the time. <laughs> Taryn said, Will shuts it down quick. Taryn said, that's a lie. I get told I'm wrong all the time. Yeah, because you have my opinion. Like. <laughs> if, you, yeah, if you're actually wrong, listen, if you're actually wrong, and it's like a conversation between you and Will, and this also me and Will best friends, so it's different, but like, if you're actually wrong, Will will tell you you're wrong if it's not that serious of a situation. Yeah. I will say that. But if it's like the situation we referring to, which I will never know, on a, <laughs> a lot more nuance than that, <laughs> Then it's like, yeah, nigga, you want to stay out of this shit. So, <laughs> but do you think like with the people, so many people are just willing to just take their friend's side and um just make the other person feel crazy? Like, doesn't that fuck up the world communication? Like, it's already fucked up as it is. Yeah, I mean, then at least people like unchecked. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> well, you might be knowing you're wrong, but fuck this shit. I'm gonna ride or die right now. Why you gotta? Is it not? Is that do you call that love? Because I I call love correcting somebody. Like, yeah, I agree. Let somebody just be wrong for the sake of their ego is not love. love. <laughs> 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 You're really like a whole ass. No, that's just... called yes, man. That's why. Ain't nobody got time. That's why some people in the position they are now. Uncle Kobe says, I'm a ride wrong or right. We talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to ride. <laughs> you can just sit down. Oh, you got to. You can just pull them aside real quick. Hey, bro. Hey, hey, bro. Just... hey man. You know you, you, know you fucking wrong, you right? to, Wait, how do you do it? How do you do it? You know, yeah, you, you do it on your homework right here. <laughs> hey, bro, hey. Oh, she gonna do it on the small ass back? <laughs> Just go back right here. Just go back. <laughs> hey, nigga, listen. You had to call him. You gonna whisper in his ear? <laughs> you can't let the other part, the other part. He had to call him. You gonna whisper sweet <laughs> corrections in his ear? Yes, <laughs> I gotta be gentle with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> No nah, man, you ain't gotta let your friend be wrong as hell, bro. Like it's especially when you talk about like when it comes to like, you know, misogyny and <gasps> For real, like a rape goes to even like when your homeboy just no, saying some yeah. some fucked up shit. But can can I just that say I I know I'm not on the show. I just I really do have to say this so people can know you do practice what you preach because I remember mm-hmm. that one time. Thank and you. he was asking that one guy all these questions, like questioning him, calling a woman a thought, questioning oh, him calling a text. woman a hoe. Yeah, yeah, questioning it to get him to think differently. And then he came around and was like, well, you know, actually, yeah, I mean. So you do actually do that, and there's a way to do it, but. I appreciate yeah. that. And I think that's how it's done. Like, this, we got to have that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then Will, I'm just trying to get Will right. No, you ain't, bro. I'm, I've been right. <laughs> Right. If we could just get the B word out of Will's like vocabulary, we'll be, be straight. And add it to mine. It's gonna be tough. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna take some work. Well, yeah, man. Get y'all get your friends together, please. Yeah. Don't be out here telling your friend they're right when they're definitely wrong. Please don't. Patrick That's Keith how you get Kanye situations. And B's exactly. Rutledge joined in. Pat Pat X, what's happening, brother? You don't have to spit some bars oh, in Pat. Oh, I shouldn't even said that. I said I'm just, <laughs> She waving at the computer right now. Good. See you. I love great. this kid. The Kendrick, what? The new Kendrick? The new Kendrick. The Southern Kendrick. Fantastic. How long have we been on the air? Um, how does it tell me? I know it was red. Thank you. Oh, 5347. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so, me and Mike had the great pleasure of seeing the new Joker movie. Absolutely. If you haven't seen it, <laughs> you have seen it. I will never <laughs> see it. If you haven't seen it, it came out last Friday. Yeah. Yeah, last Friday. Mm-hmm. Excellent movie. Everybody should go watch it. It's really well. If I said that's in a proper mindset to watch this, so yeah. it starts with doing this right. If you're unstable, it's hard. <laughs> if you're unstable, it might you be tripped over any. You... <laughs> that should be like a good idea to you. But yeah, man, me and Mike both enjoyed the movie. We what did. was your favorite parts of the movie? What some of the favorite things about it? Are we trying to do non spoilers? Oh, yeah, where are we going? If, if, if it was two weeks, <laughs> yeah, it was I know, right? Free game. We're going to come back and do a spoiler, spoiler episode. Um, I would say just the performance by Joaquin in general. He gets a lot of a ton of screen time, right? So it's called Joker, mm-hmm. but like, I'm such a 
Um, I think his performance was just extremely on point. I love the pacing of it. A lot of people was complaining about it. I think you complained about the first half of the movie. Uncle Kobe first. says it starts off slow, I heard. It does, but <laughs> boom, it's got to build up, bro. You can't just like come out like, ah, I'm joking, blah, 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 and just shooting everybody. Like You got to build up into why he turned crazy. Well, he was already crazy. You got to turn it to you know, why he turned into who he becomes, everything he's gone through, him trying to get help from the you know psychiatric mm-hmm. people. They're not trying to help him because the black lady was like, hey, nigga, I'm getting fired. I don't give a damn about it. <laughs> I'm getting fired. Why don't you get your medicine? <laughs> <laughs> Let me go personally. Like, it was, <clears throat> there's a whole build up. The build up pays off immensely. Yeah. That second half of that movie is lit. <laughs> the whole movie, man. Was, mm-hmm. What was wrong with the pacing? What was, it was extremely fucking slow. Well, it's not extremely. You, you and Greg just want, like, <laughs> getting shot in the face at the first scene. They're the kind of people who skip I mean, through the story of porn. <laughs> for what? <laughs> like, what is the story here for? <laughs> um, Marcus Grant joined in, and Uncle Kobe said, "It don't take that long to know that you're crazy. <laughs> to know you that crazy." We gotta stop saying crazy. We try to have an actual discussion about him mental health in this whole segment. Um, you are. What was? It? <laughs> <laughs> we, we said that. You said that last other night. Nigga, just crazy to me. Okay. What was your favorite part? I said that because I know you be caring about mental health. Right now. <laughs> That's your shit. That's your shit. <laughs> now, my favorite part of the movie was uh, had to be the 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 dark comedy in it. Like, oh, bro, yes. For it be like some serious shit happening, and then like out of nowhere they hit you with some just bro, ridiculously that one shit. scene. We doing a spoiler free episode, but that one yeah. scene. The soul. Uh, there's one joke in the whole movie. That I laughed at, that ain't nobody else in the theater laugh at. When he was, uh, when he looked at, when he showed the lady his book of poems, uh-huh. his book of jokes, <laughs> book of poems, his book. Of, well, I was looking at you. That's why I said book of poems. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, he was, it was his book of jokes, and uh, what he said, I, I don't want to ruin it because just. So just the sense, the sense, yeah, the sense thing. Oh, ain't nobody yeah, else laugh at me. <laughs> well, they laugh at us. <laughs> Nigga. And I felt bad. And the nigga was like, hey, y'all ain't laughing at us. <laughs> it was so, how she read it. Um, says, your human has always been different, Will. Hey, straight up. Like, that's me. <laughs> so I that's a scene. It. That's a whole scene in the movie where, like, and this is little quirks that you haven't got in the movie. Like, it's a scene where he's, like, watching other comedians to kind of study them yeah. and their technique. So this nigga goes to a comedy club. I just had to interrupt you because, you know, it? our boy, we had to give a shout of out course. to our What's boy, Darwin. Woo! We love you, man. <laughs> you get a whole welcome just now. Exactly. <laughs> Precisely. Um, it's a scene where he goes to the comic club to tell, study other comedians. And um, He was laughing at the, at the, the, the setup. He kept laughing at the setup. This shit was so awkward. <laughs> like, imagine you go to the comedy house and somebody keeps laughing at the setups of the jokes. And then the punchline comes and they just dead quiet. <laughs> that shit was so... <laughs> that was like, he was like, yeah, so uh, I'm married and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so creepy. It was so creepy, but yeah, yeah man, the um, movie is the movie is excellent. The movie is amazing, man. Y'all need to see if you can handle. Like I said, it's not. I mean, it's not the most violent movie I've seen, but it's got some. It's, it's got, got some, some graphic scenes. parts. It's got some scenes. It's not movie. really gruesome. It's just graphic. Yeah, it's just and it just catches you off guard. It's very rare that a movie catches. I think me and Will off guard at this point. Yeah, but um, it was one scene in particular. Like, oh shit, nigga! Oh, okay. You talking about with the, with, with the in, the, in the apartment? Yes. Yeah. Golly, bro. That's it. I mean, you saw it coming, but you ain't know how it was gonna happen. Um, but it does very Tarantino much. style. <laughs> <laughs> Blood coming from everyone. <laughs> um, but I mean, as far as oh yeah, as far as the controversy, like what do you? I think I got just I just told you about the controversy about people walking out of the movie because they said it was too violent or too disturbing. They bitch made. <laughs> <laughs> if you went in there. If you went into a rated R movie about right. Joker, right, and you thought it was going to be anything but uh, on the edge, right. like <laughs> you, you fucked up. Ain't this the first rated R Joker movie? Probably. I don't know any other rated R Joker movie. There ain't hardly no rated R movies with comics, right? Deadpool, but that's about it. Yeah, of course Deadpool. But as far as the Joker, I don't remember if the kid, the adaptation of the Killing Joke was officially rated R. No, it couldn't be because that shit wasn't even that serious. Yeah. So yeah. So, but it need to be rated R, and they and rated R, yeah, rated R did it justice for sure. No, like, I'm so happy they did. I did yeah. not want a PG thirteen like 
Oh, that should have been whack. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what I hate about Nolan's, like, Batman movies. Is like, every time Joker killed somebody, like, they just fall down. Like, every time he would shoot somebody. Oh, yeah. They would just, like, uh, 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 they just fall down. But all Marvel, Marvel movies would just fall down. There's no really blood that much. So, yeah. um, I would say, <laughs> as far as the conversation on mental health, <laughs> do you think this can open it up more? <laughs> Dragon. No, man. It's not. No. What's your it's, it's, it's You think people going to take any kind of seriousness <laughs> about Joker? I, like, I think the way. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, shit. You better take your Lexapro. You might turn into the motherfucking Joker. <laughs> not the Joker. <laughs> Prozac, my, first of all. Peanut, my girl turned into Joker off the Lexapro. Say what? <laughs> you stupid? <laughs> See, I hope she watches. I know, right? Um, That last yeah. scene, like, he has, like, a very okay, long dialogue. <laughs> It's very like on the nose about mental health. I feel like it's like very or like about not paying attention to the little people who might be going through things. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, do you think people might look at that and think more consciously about stuff like that? So they just be not people at the top. <laughs> <laughs> not people at the top. <laughs> oh, brush that shit no. off. Oh no! If I write my nigga, get back to work. You get. <laughs> 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 Slaves Club. Bruh, yeah, that's where I came from, bro. <laughs> Club. So I know how it works. <laughs> well, yeah, man, go see it. It's a great movie. Yeah. I don't know if there's any comments on that. Nope. So you that. mentioned... <laughs> <laughs> so so you, mentioned uh, you mentioned the Dark Knight Joker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Christopher Nolan's Joker. Mm-hmm. How do you feel like this Joker ranks as far as the Jokers we've seen over the past, you got it. Well, like I said, Jared Lotto's top Stop, five. Stop, so. man. <laughs> Cut the bullshit now. Let me tell you what I did before the show. I literally went to YouTube, <laughs> and I, went, I looked up all the Joker scenes from um, Suicide Squad. Oh, my God. I was like, this shit couldn't have been that bad. It couldn't have been. Like, it's the Joker, right? So, like, I looked up all the scenes, and all the scenes total like, six minutes. Mm-hmm. That shit was so, like, overacted. <laughs> so forced. In some parts, it's awkward. I don't even completely blame him. I think part of it's a script. Like part of it's not his fault. Part of it, he's only in there for six minutes. <laughs> that too. Yeah, that's the main. Like, can't get Joker any kind of. And the fact that he's Takashi Six Nine Joker, like with the goatee <laughs> and face tattoos. Um, but yeah, where does it rank? Um, it's I got to digest. I got to see the movie a couple times first of all. I didn't see the Dark Knight. So many times. Golly, I have seen this shit. I haven't seen it at least. At least 10, 15 times now. I love that movie. That and, movie um, goes to and when I watched Heath Ledger, like I was immediately captivated by everything he did. Anytime he was on the screen, yeah. well, I knew he was on the screen. I was going to come on the screen. I didn't think he did was perfect. But Joaquin, I think he did an amazing job. Um, it was like sometimes it seemed like the he was a little bit trying a little bit too hard to laugh, and like I think it was like one and a half scenes. Mm-hmm. As I could kind of tell, he was forcing it out. Yeah. Um, but he did phenomenal. I think he's like it's like Heath, and then, I mean you got to tie Heath with like what's his name, Mark Hamill from the oh, <laughs> animated that, series. That thing is dope. <laughs> you got to tie them together. They at the same level. And um, and then under that, uh, under that, um, it's between him and Jack Nicholson, I guess. Like Jack Nicholson's was over the top too, but it was you know on purpose. I don't know. I have to see that. I have to see it a couple more times first. Oh. Uh, so I really do like this Joker. The only thing that I will say is that one of the appeals about Joker is that he is kind of mysteriously crazy, right? You know what I mean. And this movie kind of takes that away. Absolutely. Like you know why he's crazy. Exactly. Um, hold on a second. Um, That's what made the Dark Knight so great because his story kept changing every time he told it to somebody. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was yeah. He was changing shit. My wife, I mean, I did it with my, for my wife. Yeah, and my daddy did it. And all yeah, that shit was amazing, bro. Yeah. So, <laughs> as far as like how they acted, I think like but they both did a good job. For sure, great job. It's just the backstory mm-hmm. is kind of different. So, in that aspect, I would probably slide it to Heath Ledger's Joker. Because Jared Leto's Joker is just not on the <laughs> map whatsoever. Jack Nicholson also did a real good job in Joker. Right. But that's a little older before it's my like, time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <For what? laughs> yeah, it's not it's not as edgy. Like it's not That's not edgy at all. Like. Yeah. And for whatever reason he, he like would take the face paint off at times and Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really weird. 
Um, Tim Burton, that's what it does. So, yeah, man. I mean, it was a it was it was a really good movie, and um, I wish it wasn't. Oh, I wish it wasn't a standalone. What you what you wish that was like going to like the DC? Yeah, I wish universe. it was updated. I wish really? it was updated, and it would kick off the DC universe. The restart that they desperately need to do. <laughs> but how would that work though? Because like, I mean, I'm sure it's not a. I don't know if it's a spoiler, but according to like the ages, like wouldn't Batman be like a kid? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, like they would, they would have to do it differently. Yeah, like, yeah. This shit would have to like Bruce. I mean, Thomas and his wife would have to die, or Bruce is like off to college or something. <laughs> they wanted to include that, right? So, you know. I mean, I kind of do the uh, walking. I know walking has no interest in making it like a, a recurrent thing. He just wants oh, really? to do this one thing. Yeah, he he, he killed it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I do too, man. I, DC Universe for sure needs to kick an ass. That's for sure. Um, I don't know what that's gonna be. Maybe it's gonna be this. Apparently, what's the name? Pattinson is still gonna be Batman. In yeah. These ultimate things. I don't know how that's gonna work. But then I was I was doubtful as hell when Ben Affleck was supposed to be Batman. That nigga killed that shit. So, I guess. Nigga, he was a great Batman. He was a good Batman. I don't know about great. great. Yeah, come on, great. His Bruce Wayne was like really douchey, like Bruce Wayne is. Absolutely, it was perfect. <laughs> I think I think um, Christian um, Christian Bale was had a better Bruce Wayne, but Ben Affleck's Batman was definitely better. Like Christian Bale kept doing this creepy shit with his voice. Well, he would just like contort his whole mouth and sound like deep. Yeah, you remember that shit? It was so distracting. But okay, so we have a new comment. Um, Jay said DC tried to microwave Marvel's success. It's mm-hmm. a process. You got to fully <clears throat> flesh a lot of stuff out. And a while ago, Lee Ford joined. Oh, Lee, what's oh, up, what's baby? Up? You been, patrol man? night, baby. Patrol night. We're doing it tonight, again. man. We're doing patrol night tonight. Get the bottle on your way home. What you paying for? Lee, Derek, where are you Lee, at? Derek. <laughs> we too old. I should have said something long. <laughs> <laughs> you should have. Um, yeah, I agree, Jay. They um, try to just, they basically, like, he was taking the test, and they, like, Marvel was sitting over here, and he was like, oh, shit, man, let me get it. <laughs> <laughs> let me get it. Bro, so, bro, you see got to do something different. Like, they need a rated R, like. Because like, you just can't compete with Marvel. You can't. If the universe is too big, they got too much character development. For sure. Just make that shit edgy. Please do. I mean, it's still going to make a lot of money. You know, cut the budgets. You can't do the Marvel budgets now. Because you ain't going to make that much money if they rate it all. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much money. But it's already edgy. Like, Batman, they had Batman killing people and shit. Like, I love that. Like, Somebody in the dream sequence? No, he killed people in Batman v Superman. He was blowing niggas up. Remember when he was in the in the Batmobile, like racing towards like I think they were in like a tractor trailer and they all came out shooting at him and the nigga just shot. Oh yeah, okay, him. yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> he was killing niggas, bro. Skadoosh. <laughs> <laughs> he was killing bro. So anyway, um, I think we're about that's about time. Um, don't don't do this part. What? Don't even mention it. Don't even mention it right now. Bro, where you get this thing? You can start right here. You can even do her if you know her business like that. You know I'm all dude. Bill's out on this shit. Let me see. Still doing let me see. Yes, she's still doing let me see. Oh, wait, wait, what? <laughs> what are we doing right now? Uh, so sis, sis, sis and Miss Star helped us out. Uh, she has a lovely business. L- lemon Seed. Content it's, writing, yes. I'm a writer. Thank you. Okay, sure. Sorry, explain what you do. You want to go with this? Oh, well, I'm going to come on here? If you want to. Don't. Oh, now she's got to do hair and makeup. Lord Jesus. Don't knock this, over there. What? How did I get over there? Come this way? Don't knock nothing over. over. That's what I'm saying. I don't know why we're doing this now. Okay, Please now. look down at the Michael ground. Michael told me to. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> get so on your knees up. as you're used to. <laughs> Yo. Oh. Ain't enough money in the world that you have. <laughs> I don't want it. And you do it for free. If I love the person. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Ahead, like two minutes before we um, I'm really mad that you put me on the spot. Um, well, no, we'll put you on the spot. We'll have to sit together. Okay, it's but it, it's fine. Um, yeah. So I've been doing this since February. I have a business name, Living Seed, and it's kind of like two parts. Um, my introverted side means I'm a writer. I create content for businesses. I'm working with an artist now. I'm working on his website. He's got 
a bunch of oil paintings, watercolor paintings, and I'm doing descriptions, getting really creative with it. Um, I've ghost written for people for their blog and, you know, working on partnering with some more people who are doing like the graphics in and I'm doing content. So I really decided to just kind of like get really comfortable as a writer. Um, extroverted side is like my out there personality is like I, I do events. So, you know, mm -hmm. mental health meetup, you know, we did Which that in honor of Robert. Um, that's just something that we did for the community. But um, we did the thing with New Growth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I kind of chill on that because it really takes a lot of energy yeah. and I want to make sure that when I do another event, it is for a very strong purpose. But in the meantime, I'm writing and cranking out content. Now for my personal thing, because I'm just a writer as me, as Star, I have an erotic fiction book coming out and yeah. it has several erotic fiction short stories in different yeah. categories. So I already performed a little part one of mm. uh, one of the stories. I sing as well, so I'm mixing the music. Where did you perform part one at? I performed it at Blue Note, yeah, yeah. <laughs> White Mule. So yeah. at the two-year anniversary, actually, yes, and my yeah. mom was in the no, my yes. mom was in the building. No, no, my mom came for the two-year anniversary, but then the next time I yes, came we, in to be a rock right. I was like grinding on the chair. Like I really just that was like my coming out party. Good time for everybody. It was it was a good time for me and the stool. I'm sure you should have started. Absolutely. <laughs> so right you now. know, lemon seed. Um, I prefer people just hit me up directly as I make a lot of changes to my website and marketing. Look. That's somebody's phone. You know, I, I ain't got my phone right now. <laughs> oh shoot, I have my mom's phone right now. Sorry. <laughs> well, 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 let this be your outro music. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Let me go back to moderating. It's really fun. <laughs> Thank you so much, Star. Um, so yeah, check out Lemon Seed. Absolutely great services. I can attest to that. Like I said, she helped with new growth events, and um, it's a wonderful thing. Our thirst of the week this week is Miss. <laughs> you gotta check out. I'm ready. She ain't no Instagram model now, um, but Miss Freddie Harold. So what are we doing this for? <laughs> if I can't find her IG, why, why are we? You can't find this. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Freddie Harold is a 28 year old French stylist, blogger, and print uh, fashion market guru. Uh, she was cosmopolitan's 2018 influence of the year. Well, she got a blue check too. Yeah, but she verified. Um, super pretty lady. Um, very, very creative, excellent, excellent public speaker. Um, she's always talking about just like positivity, getting being in love with yourself. And uh, she's very, very stylish, though, like very, very dope. Uh, like I said, she was our uh, 2018 uh, Cosmopolitan's Influence of the Year. Founder and CEO of Radswan, which is a conscious beauty brand built with and for global African diaspora. Um, and she's been featured in Vogue, TEDx. Marie Claire and all kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, so another black woman doing it. Absolutely. Black women are starting businesses more than any other group in the world right now. Absolutely, as they should. And this is a just a beautiful, wonderful, huge afro. You saw the hat. I don't know if you looked at yeah, it. Yeah, of course I did. The I want to hair see is amazing. Yes, she was trying to promote, and it's not BS. <laughs> it's beautiful <laughs> sister. That's what it means. BS. Oh, I like that. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Um, yeah, if you want to check her out, she's on IG at Twitter, at Freddie Harrell. That's F-R-E-D-D-I-E. I'll put it here. Uh, please do. Thank you. Um, check her out, man. She's just very, very dope. And um, I just love the shit that black women are doing right now, especially on this whole super positive tip. It's wonderful. I know Will hates black women, but <laughs> we like to celebrate them Ooh. over here. I don't hate anyone. I strongly dislike Star. <laughs> <laughs> hey, which is a black woman. Who's a black woman? Coincidence. Coincidence. No, she embodies black woman. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Final thoughts, man. Well, <laughs> right. I'm tagging her. I'm tagging her. Hopefully, she's gonna watch this and she gonna be like, "Ooh, they shouting me out." Yes, I hope so. Um, Put final, us on, Freddie. Final thoughts. <clears throat> we want to thank everybody for coming back and joining us yes, after we had that you. layoff. Appreciate y'all. Um, we also want to thank Star. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank Star for uh, helping us moderate uh, the comments. Yeah, thank you. Really. Yeah. Yeah, it, was <laughs> it was mad funny. You got some funny friends. Yo, you got some lit. really funny friends. They lit, man. They're followers. No, <laughs> they're friends. Stop being a dick. I'm no, they're chair. no, they're friends also, but no, friends and don't so, act so, like it's. So, so, I mean, okay, fine. They're, they're friends. <laughs> They're friends. Okay. Like mutually exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, man, we're going to keep trying to bring you more content. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to get back on our regular schedule. Gerard Chandler joined in at the last minute, but he joined in. Gerard, hey, yeah. Gerard, my guy. <laughs> We want to. Want yeah, we want to thank Gerard for joining in. Right. Uh, we talked about Joker, Amanda Seals, and Amber Geiger. Yeah. So rewind. Uh, <laughs> I misspelled something. Out. No, no, I was sure. not surprised. <laughs> um, yeah, man. You got any final thoughts, man? I uh, just love being back, man. Appreciate the conversation. Uh, appreciate you defending this white lady. Um, love. I didn't defend her. <laughs> I didn't defend her. It was such a backward show because she was like defending what she did. I'm usually fighting for Amanda Seals. Like, it's so crazy. But we'll see if, if, uh, if Vanessa come out and be like, let me tell y'all what really happened. And she come over seats, like, Vanessa Anderson, I hate that bitch Amanda Seals. <laughs> and she just go in, like, she just sell all these screenshots of Amanda. Ooh, she goes, bro, she did that. Ooh, I can't do nothing for Amanda. <laughs> I can't do nothing for Amanda. Amanda, you know I just let it in like you. <laughs> but yeah, man, it was a wonderful show. Thank y'all so much for joining. We appreciate y'all. Immensely. We love y'all. You know. We'll see y'all in two weeks. In two weeks, man. Yeah, two weeks every two weeks. What are you typing? I was typing in the Can you stop the video though? Oh <laughs> I didn't know. Oh. Peace out. I love y'all more, 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 more than Mike. I love y'all more than Mike. I love y'all more than Mike. I love y'all more than Mike. We might be doing this for a mess up this whole thing. No, no, it's my video. It's my video. Wait, you gotta time it right. I gotta hit it, yeah.